All right, I am sick and tired of everyone saying that the only thing you need to get right in order to get your emails delivered through GHL is the tech. It's just not true. In fact, this slap that Google and Yahoo were supposedly coming out with in February and actually did come out with, I thought I set up correctly, but turns out the team member I signed to do it, it didn't get saved. And I sent tens of thousands of emails after February 1st with 97, 98, 99% delivery. It's just not all about the tech. I would say that's probably 30% of it. The other 70% has to do with what we'll talk about in this video. So before we get into it, I just want to set expectations. I'm going to tell you everything you need to do to get good delivery consistently when you're sending through GHL. So the first thing that we need to get right and is easy to get right for everybody is the tech. So let's talk about that first. There's four ways to send email through GHL, and I'm going to go through the different levels here. Number one is don't set up anything. You're going to be sending through the mg.msgsdndr.net, whatever it is. Email, this is a terrible idea. It's just the default. You're sharing your email credit score with absolutely everyone who's ever signed up for high level. Don't do it. This is what the new update from Google and Yahoo will really be cracking down on. But truth is, it didn't work before this update. So if you were using it, you were not getting delivered at all. The second option is to have a software wide sending domain. So this would be, for example, my software streamline.io. I could just set it up as mail.streamline.io. And everybody who signs up for my software would send with that and would have a little via next to their email that says replies.streamline.io. This is a fairly good solution and probably will get you pretty far. But there are some tech concerns with deliverability, but honestly, this is super solid and probably a good starting place for most. Your third option is to set up individual subdomains for every single sub account, but inside of your own domain. So instead of going into your client's DNS settings, if you don't know what DNS settings are, basically they're where you set up all of this email stuff, also where you set up your website domain and where that points to all that kind of thing. I really don't understand it from a tech perspective, but I know how to actually execute it. And that's all you need to know in this case. And basically what I'm suggesting here for number three is instead of going into your client's DNS settings, which they don't really know how to access most of the time and may have lost the logins for, you just go into your own DNS settings and you make a subdomain specific to them. For example, joescrapshack.streamline.io or jimmysdogtraining.streamline.io. This way you're not getting everyone sharing the reputation of that one software wide sending domain. And if one client goes rogue, all they're screwing up is themselves, not you. The other big pro here is that it's easy to set up, as I mentioned. That brings me to number four, which is setting up a dedicated domain for absolutely every single sub account that you have. Now you should definitely do this for your own sub account and any businesses that you own that are running on GHL because it's not that tough to figure out and it's going to give you the best deliverability. However, if you want to set this up on behalf of your clients, that's another story. Again, a lot of them don't have the login. They don't even know what the word DNS means and it can kind of be a big project to get in there and plug everything in. Now, the people I know that do this model, what they do is either set up an appointment with the person and go ahead and set up their entire email sending strategy for them on the call, plus point their domain and get everything situated on their DNS, which could work from an onboarding perspective, but takes a lot of time, especially if the client isn't super tech savvy. Or what they do is get the login credentials from the client and say, okay, we're going to log in at this time, 415 on Tuesday. You have to be available to send us a two-factor authentication so we can get in, configure everything for you. You don't have to touch it. I think this second option is really solid, especially considering that one of the biggest ways you can stop people from churning on your software is plugging in their domain. So if you get that login, go in, plug in their domain, set up their email, everything's good to go and they don't have to do anything themselves. It's going to save them and you a ton of time and money. So those are the four options, really only three options because nobody should be using number one. I would recommend if you're just starting out and you're strapped for time, start with number two and then work up to number four if that's what you want to do. Number three is also a pretty solid medium solution that could last you quite a long time. And then if a client's having an issue with deliverability, you can just transfer them over to their own sending domain and get access to the DNS, but not included in your onboarding period when they're already confused. Great. So now that you understand those options, we have to go over what's actually required from Google and Yahoo to get emails into the inbox from a tech perspective. Then we'll dive into the other stuff that's not tech and is more important. The first step is setting up a branded subdomain. And again, this can be done on the agency level as an agency wide sending domain, or you can do it on the individual account level and set up the dedicated domain specifically for that sub account. Either way you do it, the setup is exactly the same. You're just in a different spot. So I'll show you how to do both of those now. Now, if I want to do level two, which is a software wide sending domain, I would come here on the agency level. I would set up a dedicated domain for everyone in this account. And as you can see here, I've got a dedicated domain and I've got a notification section. So notification emails, meaning that they're sent to anyone that is an agency or sub account user is going to send from the domain I set up here. And this domain here will be for any emails that are going to people outside of the users of any individual sub account or the agency. So first let's set up the dedicated domain. And here I want to put a domain that matches the name of my software, since this is going to be software wide sending. 
a little trick I like to do is just add the first letter of whatever the domain actually is, which sort of blends in. So s.streamline.io in this case would be that domain. I actually already have this one set up. For this example, I'm going to do replies.streamline.io. Io. You could add mail, you could add whatever you want in this subdomain portion of the domain. Then I'm just going to hit add and verify. And high levels actually come out with this new really slick wizard that allows you to do this automatically where you used to have to do it manually. So if it senses that it's able to do it automatically, it will give you this option to just hit continue. If it doesn't, you'll have to add the record manually, which I'll show you how to do in just a second. But nine times out of 10, this is what's going to happen. It will set up the entire domain and show you exactly what records are going to be added where inside of your DNS provider. If you don't use Cloudflare, don't worry. It's the same on GoDaddy, HostGator, wherever your DNS settings are hosted. So all I have to do here is hit authorize domain. It'll have me log in. And then again, it will show me everything that it's going to add automatically. Now, if for some reason you don't get the automatic setup, you're going to see a screen that looks like this. And you're just going to copy paste each one of these types of records into your DNS setting. So navigate to wherever DNS settings is, go ahead and hit add record, and then you will reference the individual records here and put them in the required slot. So for example, on this txt record, I would select the type, which is t txt. Then I would use the name. And it's very important here that you do not put the entire domain, you just put the subdomain. So let's say I'm doing this one here. I'm not going to put replies.streamline.io. I'm just going to put replies. Cloudflare automatically updates this if you get it wrong, but some registrars don't, and it could cost you a lot of time trying to pull your hair out. So just include the subdomain portion here. Then it would come back and copy the content here. And then it will tell me that I should create the TTL as 10 minutes. So I'll come here, select 10 minutes. If you don't have this option, don't worry about it and hit save. And then I would do the same for all of these other records. But since this is just going to do it automatically for me, I'll just hit authorize. And as you can see, those are all updated there for me. Pretty amazing. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to see this screen again, and you'll see typically that all of these have been verified except one. And then if you just go ahead and hit verify again, it will show you that all of them have been verified. If you have any issues with these not updating, go back and watch what I explained about manually doing them, or just wait five to 10 minutes and try again and these should update. Sometimes it's a little bit finicky. Just keep hitting verify domain. And as long as you did everything correctly, it'll eventually update. Great. So as you can see here, we've got the shared IP here. It is inactive, but, and the SSL is unknown, meaning we need to hit verify now again, even though it said it was verified, it's still having a little bit of trouble. So I'm hitting verify and boom. Now, one last thing you can do while we're here is actually set the headers where you can say the default from name and the default from email that will send on anything sending from this domain. If you're the only one that's going to be sending from this domain, you could set it as you, but if it's going to be a software wide sending domain, then I would probably name it the name of your software just in case somebody doesn't fill out the from information. It just gets sent as a generic software name instead of your name for your client's clients. Now, if you haven't set up your notifications dedicated domain, you're going to see an option to do that here. It's the exact same process. Just give it a different subdomain. Now, if I go back to email services here and I select location settings, you're going to see that most of the sub accounts that I have on here are not actually assigned to the subdomain that I just set up. And so what I can do is this one's on the default lead connector, come in, select domain and assign it to that replies.streamline.io that I just created. Now, any new sub accounts that I do create should be automatically assigned to the default email provider inside of the SMTP services, which you can see is s.streamline.io, the one that I usually use. Side note, while we're here, anybody that's taking email marketing seriously should be turning on email verification. This is a paid service at 0.25 cents per email email, but totally ends up being worth it because it protects your reputation like we'll go over in just a minute. Beautiful. Now, if you're going to do this on the individual sub account level, you're going to want to navigate to the individual sub account first. So let's take this example of a dummy account I have of pest control going beyond. I'll go to settings, email services, and it will prompt me to create this dedicated domain, which I can either click here to do, or I can just select this here. Then I'll just come into here and add domain. And because this is a pest control company, I have two options here. If I'm setting it up as the software owner, as a subdomain of my main domain, it would be something like pest control going beyond dot streamline dot IO. It's a little bit long, so maybe I could just do pest control Astoria 
app.streamline.io and then I would hit add and verify and I'd go through the exact same process as before. Now, if instead I was adding a dedicated domain with my own website as the software user, not the owner, I would come in and just do replies dot pest control going beyond dot com hit add and verify and get everything set up there now if your client ends up creating a bunch of different subdomains they can come here to domain configuration and they'd be able to select a specific domain for a specific purpose on each one of these they'll also have the option to set the headers like i showed you earlier on this software wide domain all right so if you've done that congratulations you've done 90 percent of the tech required to actually get you up and running the next thing that's required and kind of new in this update that everyone should have is the DMARC record. And what DMARC is, explained simply, it stops anybody from impersonating you and helps you prevent being marked as spam or phishing. The setup for this is super straightforward, so let's jump into it now. All right, so head to your good old DNS settings, and what we're going to do is hit add record. And this is going to be another TXT record for DMARC, and it's going to ask us what the name is. What we need to put in here is underscore capital DMARC, and we'll put a dot and then the name of our subdomain. So in my case, I'm setting this up for my main sending domain, which is that S dot streamline. So I'm going to just type the letter S. If you have replies, you would type the letter replies there. For me, it's S. Then on the content, we're just going to paste this. V equals D mark one semicolon space P equals none. This P equals none thing is totally fine according to the email experts out there. If you want a more restrictive D mark policy, then you're going to want to consult with somebody who can help you through this process, but that's out of the scope of this video. Google themselves has released a tutorial on how to do this, but if you just want to cover your bases and make sure you don't get slapped by Google and Yahoo, this will do the trick. So I'll go ahead and hit save here. And to check that worked, we need to come here to this website, Demartian or Demarkian, I'm not sure, and type in our domain. This is your subdomain. So I'm gonna do s.streamline.io and hit check my domain. And there you go. It says I have a valid DMARC record that provides visibility to the entirety of your email programs and helps ensure you meet email sending best practices. It has given me this warning that it's not fully protected against abuse as it does not take full advantage of the protections afforded by DMARC. That would be if I really want to up the security, I could follow the instructions in that Google article that I mentioned that will also be linked down below. But for the purposes of what I'm doing, this is 99% there and I'm good with it. All right, so that's pretty much it from a tech perspective, like for real, for real. If you set this up, you've done 99% of what you need to do. The last thing you can do is go to postmaster.google.com and fill out everything in the wizard there. And that should help you get even more trust with Google, but it's not 100% necessary. Now let's get into the real nitty gritty of what's actually going to help you get delivered to people's inbox inboxes instead of promotions or spam or anything else. What you've got to understand is that once you've got this tech down, it's really a combination of two things. Reputation, which is determined by things like how many people open your emails each time. Are you getting a 50% complaint rate? Are you sending to a bunch of emails that aren't real emails? all of those kinds of things. And then secondly, the actual content of the email, what is in the subject line and what is in the email body. Let's go over each one of these in turn. First of all, reputation, here's your checklist. When you send an email, the recipient can do one of six things. Number one, they can open it. Number two, they can reply to it. Number three, they can click on any links that you have inside of it. Number four, the email can bounce completely and not get delivered. This would be like if somebody had an email and then got rid of that email and so it didn't get delivered at all. Fifth, they can unsubscribe. And then lastly, they can complain. So if they've unsubscribed in the past and you're still emailing them for some reason the tech didn't work that's an example of when someone might complain and mark you as spam or phishing or something like that so the really really dead simple way to think about this is we're just trying to get as many of these first three as possible and as little of these last three as possible and what does that typically come down to just following common sense don't say scammy things don't send emails to people that don't want emails from you and just send like high quality content that people would want to read or click on or promotions whatever it is you're sending just make it good now there are benchmarks for each one of these six things as well as how many emails actually get delivered that you should be trying to hit in order to maintain your reputation as much as possible. However, what I'm trying to drive home here is you falling underneath this threshold once or twice on an email is not a big deal. The biggest thing that all these email service providers are trying to encourage is just consistency. Are you who you say you are? Are you misleading people? Are you trying to scam them? If so, they're going to crack down on it. So that brings me to the next piece, which is what's actually in the email and what can help us you know, gain this reputation over time and maintain it. The key 
components of the email are going to be the from name, the from email, the subject line, the preview slash notification, and then obviously the body. All of those should engender trust with the person that you're reaching out to. So if they signed up for a specific company newsletter or they signed up to receive emails from a company and then you email them with your name and they don't know who the heck that person is, you should say your name and or just include the company name. You should also do your best to not clickbait. I'm on an email list from a friend of mine that every single one of his emails comes to my main inbox and it's complete clickbait though. So there are ways around this, but you kind of have to make sure that you're not using any like trigger words that would tip Google off to the fact that this is an email that probably shouldn't get delivered. Those words could be something like free. It could be having a dollar sign. It could be having any combination of words that Google just perceives as spammy. There are free and paid tools online where you can take your email copy and have it graded to see what the spiders on Google and other ESPs are going to read your email as and what you might be able to change to improve the chance of it getting delivered to the main inbox instead of the promotions inbox. A couple other things that can get you flagged links from other people. So if the link that you're sending doesn't have anything to do with the domain that you're sending from and it isn't a generally trusted domain like youtube.com for example, that's going to look a little bit iffy to the email service providers because it might seem like you're misleading. Another thing to be conscious of is your text to HTML ratio. Sometimes if you have too much fancy stuff, too many images, all this flashing stuff that can get you into the promotions folder for sure, or potentially just straight to spam. Also pay attention to the font you're using any non standard like fancy font that you're trying to do something cool with just stop it just use a normal font you can bold stuff you can italicize stuff but don't try to use some different font just to stand out. And that's pretty much it from a text perspective. One little hack in this area that I learned at the high level summit this year that I'll share with you guys and a nugget that could potentially help explode your email revenue send stuff like newsletters that people just want to read anyway that's your value content and then only send the promotions to the people who have opened the value content and you can actually add a trigger where once the email is opened then it sends it immediately so they're already reading an email from you they get another one promoting one of your products or something else it's a really great way to maintain your reputation because not a lot of people are going to be unsubscribing from the value emails but they will if you promote too often to the list one last thing to think about here is the amount of emails you're sending I get a lot of questions like do I have to warm this up and high level has its own warm-up process but for most people that end up getting on high level they're like do I have to warm up to send 500 emails at a time like no 500 is the warm-up and high level does have a warm-up protocol in place so you really can't go wrong following that but if you want to be super safe just start out at like a thousand emails a day and then you can work up 500 to a thousand more each day so you don't go straight from zero to a hundred thousand emails in a day that's a sure way to damage your email reputation and again overall just going along with this theme of like do things that normal businesses do make sure that you're fairly consistent in the number of emails you send if you go from zero one week to eighty thousand the next week and then you go back to zero the next week it's going to look suspicious so just try to maintain a normal semblance of okay we send these transactional emails we're getting some stuff back it's all warmed up we're good to go and then start sending a consistent amount of emails over a consistent amount of time if you're on a shared ip which most of you will be watching this video if you you know use the setup tutorial that i gave you ps you don't need anything more than a shared ip unless you're sending over 300,000 ish emails a month then these spikes and valleys and the amounts you're sending won't matter as much anyway it's just something to consider just ask yourself what would a normal business do and then just do that thanks so much for tuning into this video if you would like to sign up or upgrade your high level account using my link i have eight thousand dollars worth of bonuses that you can get completely for free just as a thank you for doing that these videos do take a long time to research edit script film etc so i very much appreciate you supporting the channel by doing that thanks so much and i'll see you next time